Bird photography is really one part luck, one part research and one part technique. And although I cannot help you with luck, I can certainly help you with your technique and also with your research. I am Emily, I'm an OM System Ambassador and for today's video I've, I am with my friends from b and and we're going to tell you about how to get ready, how to prepare before you go out and also we're going to talk about the importance of doing your research before you get into the field. And we'll also talk about ethic and that's a topic that's very very important to me because being a good bird photographer is also um, being mindful of your subject. So we have a lot of things to cover in this video. We should really get started. Birds, they are everywhere. And I don't mean it in the Hitchcock way, though I just heard a noise. But uh, no, I mean, you wake up in the morning and actually it's not my alarm o'clock who wakes me up. It's the bird next door that's singing way before my alarm o'clock. So you can just go out and do your research outside, right? Doing your research doesn't mean go to the library and study. It also means go out, take your camera and your lens and ask your neighbors, tell them what you're doing. So when I walk uh, outside every morning, I have my camera with me and usually the camera is a good way to start a conversation with people. They will always ask you questions and you should always engage and share. This is what I'm doing, this is what I'm looking for. And in return, people are gonna share with you. Oh, well, you know what? I just saw this amazing bird in the neighborhood. And you're gonna get so much information because people are really eager to share with you. So my first tip is really to communicate with human first to find the birds. Also, maybe you want to go and uh, talk to local birders. They will definitely help you and they're extremely knowledgeable. Now, if you don't have uh, anybody around you who knows about bird, there are lots of apps and websites that you can use. Some of the apps and websites that I use are eBirds. Um, I actually register for eBirds and every day I receive an email telling me about all the birds that have been uh, seen in my vicinity. So I really, really encourage you to do that so you know what you're looking for, you know what species are in the area uh, at that specific time. Other apps that I use that are always on my phone is Merlin because it will give you so much information on your bird. This is what your bird looks like. This is what your bird sounds like. And not just one sound, they will give you different calls so you can get familiar with them. And one uh, feature of this app that is really, really amazing, especially for beginner bird photographer, is the sound ID. So all you have to do is, if you hear birds around you and you're not sure what you're hearing, pull out your phone and you just click on the record button and then you have a list of birds that the app will say, you know, this is what I think I'm hearing, but it's not the gospel, you know, they might make some mistakes. So make sure that once you have that list of birds, you want to identify it with your own eyes. So look around and try to find uh, the birds that are on your list. That's a really great way to learn about the birds in your area. Another app that I really, really recommend is the Sibley Guide. Uh, it's an amazing guide and one feature that is really important is that it will let you compare the different type of birds that are very, very similar. And then with your photo, you'll be able to identify it correctly. If you're not so much into technology, well, I really, really recommend going and supporting your local Audubon chapters. I am a member of Audubon and every time I have a question, I know I can go to the center next to my house and ask them questions. They also have really knowledgeable birders who will take you on a birding walk in their area and will be able to point out to you the type of birds you'll be able to find. They also have uh, guiding books that you can um, buy from them. So 
it's another way to support them. And I highly recommend it. I have a couple of uh, bird guides in my car, so I can kind of quickly look at the different birds that uh, I photograph. We're gonna go into the importance of practicing and the importance of having the right posture when you're photographing. I've heard a lot of people who are like, oh, I wanna go to Costa Rica and I wanna photograph the uh, Quetzal. That is great. And you know what they do? They go and buy a camera straight away and uh, it's not even, it's still in the box and they're on the airplane. Well, this is not gonna work because you really need to get familiarized with your camera and you need to know how it works and you need to have the proper form. So you want contact point number one right here, contact point number two right here on your lens and then contact point number three, your viewfinder needs to uh, be right here holding against your head, right? And now I'm tucking my arm as well and here we go, I'm using uh, myself to stabilize my camera. So you're gonna get much better results if you use this technique. Don't do this, okay? This is not stable, okay? And see my, like my nose is against the camera, this is not gonna work. You want your head to be uh, against the viewfinder and just put a little bit of pressure uh, right there. You want to know your camera like the back of your hand, as I said earlier. That means that you um, need to know how to change your settings without looking at your camera. Uh, because if you start thinking, oh yeah, there is a great egret here, and then you're like, oh wait, my settings are not correct, and you start losing the visual, uh, you're going to miss a lot of shots. So practice, practice, practice. You can do a lot of exercises with your camera that will help you uh, change your setting very fast. And so once you're in the field, you have a better understanding of your camera and you can change it at the blink of an eye. And that will really make a difference. And one little extra tip is customize your camera. I have C1, C2, C3, C4 on my OM1 and they all customize for a specific function. So then if I see a coyote and I'm in uh, my bird function, I can just like up, turn the wheel and here we go. I can photograph the coyote. It saves me a lot of time. So take the time and customize your camera the way you want it. Knowing your camera will help you improve your bird photography. And last but not least, I want to talk about being an ethical bird photographer because I, I keep on hearing, oh yes, you're a bird photographer and usually you don't have really good ethics and I'm done with that. We can do better, guys. So you need to get familiar with the Audubon guide to being an ethical birder and it's packed with information. But one thing you really need to retain is to be a good an ethical bird photographer, you need to do no harm. That's not a complicated rule, but you'll be surprised at some of the things we've seen in the field. So things to keep in mind, a photo is never worth harming your subject. So use a telephoto lens. If you are a birder, you want to have that distance with your subject because one, you're not going to stress your subject, you're not going to flush them, they're going to act much more natural, which is what you want. You don't want a photo of a bird who's like all like uh, wary of your presence. You want them to act naturally. Also, you want to be very mindful of how you're approaching the bird. Don't run towards the bird. That's not going to work. They're going to start flying away. So go slow, take your time and approach them appropriately. Don't flush them, don't bait them because that can be very, very harmful to them. Also, you want to be mindful of the habitat. Are you stepping on, uh, like I'm right here, I'm on the boardwalk. I'm not going to go and step uh, right here. It's protected area. So you don't want to destruct the habitat of your subject. And also you want to be mindful of the data you have on uh, your card. So if you have GPS data, 
erase them, don't put them in your photos because some species are endangered and if you reveal their location or if your photo reveal their location, you might put them in danger. So here are all the tips that you can find on the Audubon guide. And yes, I did memorize them by heart because I think it's really, really important. And in New England, we have too many issues of people um, you know, stressing the bird and of people poisoning the birds as well. So be mindful as well of what you're using uh, in your house. Um, yes, you want to get rid of the rats, but do you want to get rid of the house? Maybe not. So always keep that in mind. I hope this video was very informative and now you are going to be more prepared when you get out in the field. But actually wait, we're not completely prepared because it's everybody's favorite subject, what's in my camera bag. So I'll be talking about the gear that I take with me when I go out looking for birds. I'm gonna show you gear that are for professional photographers, but also for the new birders. So join me next week to know what's in my camera bag. Bye.